Welcome to The Cap, where we are here to speak with college reps and other professionals in the field of college admissions to help answer all your questions and guide you through every step of the process. So if you're serious about college admissions, you've come to the right place. Are you ready? Let's talk about it. And now, here's your host, Dr. John Durante. Welcome to The Cap, the College Admissions Process Podcast. I am your host, John Durante, and I am here to introduce you to college admissions representatives and other professionals in the field of college admissions. Our purpose is to serve you, the students and parents, so that you may gain insight straight from the people who ultimately make the decisions. Regardless of whether you apply to a particular school being highlighted in a given episode, you should listen to all of them, as each guest will give you tremendous insight and advice on every aspect of the college admissions process, prompting you to come up with your own follow-up questions for when you visit campus or meet with a college admissions representative yourself. Don't forget to visit our website, www.collegeadmissionstalk.com, or the show notes of each episode to access the alphabetical list of all the colleges available with the related audio link to the right of each school. The alphabetical list provides you with on-demand access to all of the episodes so that you may listen whenever you wish. And if you want to receive links to episodes before they are released on the podcast, along with other related resources, please fill out the email opt-in form also available on our website and in the show notes of each episode. Lastly, please email me with any questions or comments at collegeadmissionstalk at gmail.com. So are you ready? Let's talk about it. Welcome to The Cap, the College Admissions Process Podcast. I am your host, John Durante, and it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you today Amanda Zuckerman, who is part of the Forbes Magazine 30 Under 30 Class of 2018 and the co-founder and chief brand officer at Dormify. Amanda, thank you so much for being here today. How are you? I am doing great. Thanks so much for having me and nice to meet everyone who's listening to this podcast. (laughs) Um, Ready to get into it. Fantastic. But Amanda, I have to start by telling you a story. Okay. I remember my oldest daughter's first moving day when she was a freshman in college. The elevator wasn't working, parents everywhere, boxes all over the place, cars double and triple parked. The (laughs) scene was chaotic, to put it lightly. And my wife and I spent hours making our way upstairs, putting her dorm together with bedding, wallpaper, and everything else. Finally, we go out, have some food, and when it was all done, I remember coming back to the dorm hours later, everyone walking around, finally saying hello to each other, and it was like walking into a Dormify showroom. (laughs) There were Dormify products everywhere, and I couldn't believe how many people use your products And I know now, after so many years, that it's due to the selection, the incredible quality, and of course, the number of styles that you make available. So Amanda, can you tell us about how Dormify came about and what is its primary mission? Yes. Well, first of all, that's such a great story. And (laughs) even though I've heard so many people say similar things, which is awesome to hear every single time I meet someone either that I know or don't know that has a similar experience, it never gets old. So I appreciate it. (laughs) My pleasure. So what is Dormify? Dormify is your one-stop shop to decorate a dorm room, a small apartment, your bedroom, any living space really that you want to reflect your own personal style. So we help you design that space to be unique to you. And we make the shopping experience stylish and fun. We design and manufacture our own exclusive products. And I can get into a little bit more in detail about what those products are. But we also curate the rest of our assortment from other brands that you may or may not know so that we can offer, again, that one-stop shopping experience and make it as convenient as possible. So we have um, always had this one-stop shop philosophy, but we've also, from the very beginning, put a lot of emphasis into our brand and what it means. And we've always said from day one that Dormify is like a big sister or an older sibling. So what does that mean? When you are transitioning from high school to college, going through major milestone moments in your life, you usually go to that older sibling, or if you're the older older sibling, that older friend or cousin or 
acquaintance that you trust, you um, feel has an authority in some capacity, but someone who's approachable. And that's really what Dormify is, um, because we want to give you tips and advice and really walk you through the process of designing a space for college or your own living space, if that's at home with your parents. And we're also here to talk about the stuff that isn't decor related. So college admissions or how to do your laundry in college or <laughs> how to make meals in your dorm room, like all those things that you would either call your big sister or your mom about, you can come to us and um, hopefully we can answer some of your questions or provide inspiration. So mission though is a great question and I don't always get asked that question. So I'm glad that you did. <laughs> Our mission has always really gone beyond aesthetics and what your space looks like. It's all about creating a space that looks like you and feels like home and provides a sense of comfort. So whether that's for yourself as an individual or your parents sending you off to college, they want you to feel comfortable. They want you to feel at home. They want this to be a place and you want this to be a place that you wake up in the morning and feel confident and you go to sleep at night and you feel confident. So our job is really to inspire confidence in college students and do that through not only creating a great space, but also walking you through important moments in your life. Well, I love that. I love how you talk about Dormify is like a big sister whose mission is to go beyond aesthetics. It looks like you and feels like you. And I also appreciate how you talked about how it reflects your own personal styles as a father of two daughters who have two very different personalities, very distinct personalities and different tastes. Your company has been able to serve my family for the last <laughs> few years. So I really appreciate that. And I have to ask Amanda, when I spoke to Karen Zuckerman, who of course is the co-founder, and of course she happens to be your mom, <laughs> she shared a story with me about UPenn and Wash U specifically, and how your own college search experience led you to create Dormify. Can you share what happened? Of course. So similar to many high school students, college admissions process is extremely competitive and stressful. And I chose a school that I wanted to apply early to. And looking back, I don't even know why I chose it. I just had it in my head that I wanted to go there. So similar to probably many students that you interact with on a regular basis, I was all in on Penn. And I was obsessed and again, didn't really know why, but I just had it in my mind. I needed to go there. So I applied early and you can probably guess I got deferred, which was heartbreaking, but a really good learning experience because I was definitely and still am a very type A, straight A, straight A <laughs> type of student. And, um, being told no was not something I was used to. So um, I grew a lot from that and started my college search process all over again. And um, it took a lot for me to like sit with the fact that I didn't get into my quote unquote dream school. But then I had the chance to take a step back and really think about what I was looking for. I went and toured a few different campuses because I hadn't done a trip prior to applying early. And I actually was planning to go to three different schools on one like spring break trip, which I'm sure many of you do or have done. And I, it, I'm laughing looking back on it because all three schools were so different. So just like an interlude to the story is, I'm sure many students these days like have some sort of criteria to the types of schools that they're applying to. But I feel like I just casted a really wide net and I had a mix of big state school, rah-rah type of schools, but then also um, schools like Wash U where I ended up going, mm -hmm. getting the punchline. Um, <laughs> but anyway, backing up, I had a trip to go to um, a big rah-rah school, a medium-sized um, sports school, and then Wash U. And I went to Wash U 
did the tour, walked around campus, like did all the standard things that you do when you go visit. And I absolutely loved it and canceled the rest of my trip. But this is all a long winded pre summary to get to the actual story, which is like you said, it is true that Dormify wouldn't exist if I had gotten into Penn. No offense to Penn. We all love Penn <laughs> still. Um, and the reason why is because I stepped onto the WashU campus and I was really inspired by these student run businesses that they have um, on the South 40, which is where all of the freshmen and sophomores live. I had never seen anything like it. It still exists today. And as a sophomore or a junior, you can actually buy a business on campus. Wow. Anything from bike rentals to a candy shop to t-shirt printing and um, Halloween costume rentals, like anything in a college student's life, there are these student run businesses on campus, shipping and storage. And I had many friends that bought into these businesses um, during our college experience, but I'd never seen anything like it. You could buy the business run it and then sell it to a sophomore when you were a senior. And I thought that was so cool. So I had that experience of just seeing these student run businesses. Then I went to um, Bed Bath and Beyond and a number of other <laughs> stores when I was shopping for my freshman dorm room. And I quickly saw that there was a huge opportunity that no one was taking. And I, I shopped for my freshman dorm room in one single day because I was a camp counselor at the time and I couldn't spend any more time doing it. But it was very clear that it was hard to find what you needed for a freshman dorm. There was no twin XL bedding that was remotely stylish or suited for a college <laughs> freshman. Everything was very childish. And there was no one to walk you through the steps and tell you what you needed or how to approach moving all of the stuff that you have into such a small space or how to pack for move-in day, like all of the things that, again, a big sister would tell you. So literally standing in bed, bath and beyond with my mom, I said, we like, why doesn't a company exist that does this, that designs bedding for dorm rooms or designs products for college students? We should design our own line. And she said, <laughs> okay, let's do it. And <laughs> what's awesome. so ironic about this is as of the last couple of weeks, the Bed Bath & Beyond on 6th Avenue in Manhattan is where this idea came to be and it is no longer open. Wow. <laughs> Which is, is just awesome. crazy. Like <laughs> we're here and Bed Bath & Beyond didn't make it, which is just wild to me. But really the the summary of this whole experience is Something didn't happen the way that I planned it to, to happen. I had to pivot and kind of start from scratch. I entered that, that journey with an open mind and I latched on to something like buying a business that was really interesting to me. And then I coupled that with um, my own personal problem solution experience that I had in my dorm shopping experience. And that led me to actually pursue the idea, which it didn't happen right away. It happened about a year or so after we kind of thought, oh, maybe we should do this. But there was many steps involved. Um, we created a dorm, dorm decor and college life blog, and we called it Dormify. And that was really like our proof of concept before we went out and made anything because we had no experience doing that. But we really needed to understand if students and families cared about what their dorms looked like because strangely back in 2010, there was no Instagram or TikTok or Pinterest <laughs> to say, Oh, like we're seeing people post about this stuff. They must care. So that's how we got started. And that really um, gave us the confidence to go out and figure out how to manufacture textiles overseas and actually design our own line of bedding. Well, that's just such an inspirational story with so many lessons. You started by talking about the college process, and you're right. It's definitely competitive. It's definitely stressful. But you have to be mindful of what you can control and things that you don't control. 
Yeah. I know, Amanda, that you were a highly academic student. Otherwise, you would not have been accepted to Wash U. And frankly, you probably should have deserved to be at UPenn as well. But everything but happens for a reason. Exactly. And you pivoted. And the fact of the matter is now you have a very successful business. But at the time, I could imagine how disappointed you were, as many students are, yeah. who don't get into their top school. And yeah. yet this is such a beautiful example of someone who did not get into their top choice school, visited Wash U, fell in love with it, fell in love with the innovation in terms of all of the businesses that you explained. And here you are with a very successful company. So thank you so much for sharing that story because I know it's um, an inspiration to many young students who are pursuing the, the college process right now. So thank you so much for that. Yeah. So Amanda, go. So sorry to interrupt please. you, but just to add one no, more thing please. because um, that sounds like a fairy, what I just shared sounds like a fairy tale story of everything working out, even when you're faced with a challenge. But I would be remiss to not mention that I also struggled in my freshman year. Yes, I visited prior to deciding to um, apply to Wash U, but I, and I loved it when I first made my visit. But my first semester, I filled out transfer paperwork. Like that is very <laughs> normal to not walk into your first week of your freshman year and fall in love. So hopefully that's helpful to hear as well. That um, there's just a lot of bumps along the way, and everything does work out as it should and things happen for a reason. You just kind of have to trust the process, which I'm sure you hear all the time, but I definitely had my fair share of doubts and just a lack of un uh, of confidence during my fall semester, but it just took time and you have to give it time. Yeah, and I would add you have to trust the process, but also stay the course. Yes. And it's great that you were thinking about transferring. That was your moment, that was your experience in that moment of time. But had you transferred, maybe you and I would not be here talking about this great company, Dormify. So yeah. it's, again, such I great lessons. I wouldn't be married to my husband if I transferred. So, <laughs> so how did that come about? <laughs> he went to Wash U and we met the first week of school. But that's Understood. a story for another time. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That's fantastic. So, Amanda, let's get back to Dormify because I'm very curious. How does Dormify cater to the unique needs and preferences of so many college students who, of course, all have unique tastes and expectations when it comes to dorm decorating. Yeah, so that's really our role, is to be able to um, create a destination where students can come and create something that is unique. Because we know that just like what you wear, the music you listen to, the um, TV shows that you watch, the books you read, your room is a expression of who you are. And that doesn't mean that you should have exactly what the person who lives next door has in your room as well. So um, the way that we do this is when we approach our product development process, we always think in personas and we have a set of personas that the brand uses as a framework to build off of. So whether it is the bedding category or artwork or really how we style our photography, we are always working into a set of personas. And of course, like within the whole realm of Gen Z, there are more than those personas, but it's a good way to just bucket um, the, the wide range of different types of students. We do create inspiration based upon um, those different personas. So you can shop by room on our website and look at, you know, 40 different looks for inspiration that you can then alter to make it your own. Um, so our role, like I said, is to provide a starting place of inspiration and then you can tweak it however you want. We're not forcing you to buy a bed in a bag, which is precisely what I was um, trying to avoid and hence why Dormify was born. So we are like the anti bed in a bag company, but we create tools to make it easier to shop. So we have our bed visualizer tool that allows you to build your bed from scratch and play around with different headboards and pillows and comforters to really land on something that feels good for you. And you can um, work with your roommate as well to coordinate, but it's all about giving the students a starting point with inspiration and then giving them the tools to then create something unique. 
Yeah, and Dormify truly helps you express yourself as it offers so many styles, patterns, and colors within its brand, as you mentioned. And I love the headboard because, <laughs> because I could imagine as a, as a student, there's not too many outlets in a dorm room. So the headboard gives you multiple USB plugs to charge phones and devices and everything else. So it's just so functional and just so well thought out. It's really awesome. So let's dig a little deeper, Amanda. Can you walk us through the product selection process at Dormify? And how do you ensure the quality of products that you offer? Yeah, so we design and manufacture our own line of products, but that's not the only product that we sell on our website. We also source other um, third-party brands to join our, our platform so that we're offering the best of the best assortment in each of our core categories. So the selection process is really inspired by our students and our community. And that's what makes us different from shopping at Target or Pottery Barn or Amazon, because we are listening to the wants and needs and preferences of high, high school and college students to inform the decisions that we're making. So our brand ambassador program is essentially a focus group that gives us feedback on um, the styles that we're choosing, what they're liking more than other things. And um, we, we also, of course, get samples of everything into our office so that we can take a look at the quality. But um, when it comes to other brands on our website, we really are going after brands that we know that Gen Z is already connecting with, or mm -hmm. it's something new that we want to introduce them to. So there is a vetting process um, for anything that we don't manufacture ourselves. But I think that the main point here is that we take every piece of feedback from students and their families into how we develop products. Um, and just my own experience from being a college student and then staying really close to college students um, throughout my, my 20s uh, after I graduated, I know exactly what problems we need to solve for in small spaces. And, you know, there's always a new restriction that a school puts out and it's just about continuing to innovate on things that are just difficult to manage right now. Well, you definitely continue to innovate. And I want to mention your student ambassador program, many of whom have offered me sound clips, which I'm using in the podcast episodes. Amanda, how did the idea come about and how do you use your student ambassadors to help you drive the company forward? So that's actually how we started the business. Um, I mentioned that we created a blog, but I wasn't the only person writing those blog posts. It was <laughs> a group of ambassadors that were friends of mine and then friends of friends and friends of friends of friends that I didn't know. <laughs> but ambassadors have always been a part of our business because um, when you're starting a business, you don't have money to spend on marketing. You need people to help you drive word of mouth. And that's always just been a really important tenant of our brand is to have a really great community that's really close to us that we have a constant line of communication with. The Brand Ambassador Program does a few things. I mentioned that they're a focus group and they get to influence brand decisions and give feedback on product, but they also get to um, earn points towards building their dream dorm room. So they share a, they get to rep Dormify and share a discount code with their friends. Um, or a link, and then they can rack up points based upon purchases that their friends make, as well as different challenges that we ask them to do, whether it's creating content or being a part of a partnership. Um, so there's lots of fun discounts and rewards that we're sharing along the way. And most of all, I think it's just a really great resume building experience um, so that outside of the classroom, you get some sort of real world skills and experience. So um, there's many ambassadors that I have personal relationships with. Um, those that really go above and beyond are spoken about as if they're an extension of our team. And um, it's just a really great opportunity. And anyone who's listening that wants to join the program, you can go to our website and there is a link in the footer for you to join. Well, that's terrific and so smart to build a community of great people that use the brand, believe in it, and they help you inform decisions about products and anything else. So that's just terrific, Amanda. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah. Can you talk about any exciting new products or initiatives that Dormify has in the works? So something that we've just launched this year is um, 
bundles. So it's a really easy way to get the essentials for your room in one click. And we have a few different levels and different budgets for different bundles. Um, so no matter what your budget is, um, what your aesthetic is, we have a way to just make it super simple for you to get the pure must haves for college. Um, so those are shoppable on our site right now. A couple of other more style oriented new things. We uh, launched a few new headboard styles this year that are really exciting. <laughs> um, the headboards are one of our best selling categories. And of course, we expanded the assortment of styles because of that. So we have a boucle headboard that people are really loving. We have a shell shaped headboard that people are really loving. Um, custom neon signs are on our website as well, which is fairly new and really, really popular for this audience. What else? Oh, the last thing is uh, we have a big partnership with the Container Store. So, regard, uh, well, I was going to mention the Westbury New York Container Store, but I know there's probably <laughs> students that are listening from outside of New York. But we will have a setup in uh, a few different container stores all over the country, 40 to be exact. And there is five locations where you can actually shop dormify product, either close to your hometown or near your college campus. So if anyone's in New York City, uh, the Sixth Avenue store will have product for sale, as well as Nashville, Houston, um, and Southern California, Orange County. Well, that's terrific. And congratulations on the new partnership with the Container Store. So I was also curious, what about students who are on a budget, Amanda? What are some of the affordable ways to decorate their dorm room using Dormify products? Yeah, so if anyone has looked on our website prior to uh, this year, we did not offer sort of an opening price point for bedding and dorm essentials. And we're really excited that we were able to bring to market an assortment of opening price point goods. So now we have uh, comforters starting at about $50, which is really affordable. And then these dorm bundles make it really easy to shop at a discount because when you bundle, you actually save more on your purchase. But a few other tips for those that are on a budget and really want to make the most out of the products that they're buying. Um, something that I, that I recommend doing is when you think about your four years of college, typically um, a student will have to change their bed size once during that four-year period. So if you only want to buy bedding once instead of twice, you could buy a full queen size comforter now and just have it hang a little bit over the edge of the bed and cover your under bed space instead of a bed skirt. And um, that would last you all four years. Uh, so that's one piece of advice. And then I would also say something that you can do if you have a really big dorm wish list and it's not something that you could take on uh, the cost of all on your own. Uh, we do have this wish list functionality on our website where you can send that to friends and family. And it's a really great graduation gift to give people in your family or friends. So I would really recommend sharing some of your dorm wish list items with grandma and other family <laughs> members and have them help out with the, the cost of your dorm. That's awesome. A dorm wish list. And I love what you talked about in terms of the queen size bed. I wish that my wife and daughters would have taken that advice, but we didn't have the conversation. So too late for my family. But again, <laughs> tremendous advice. Amanda, this has been an amazing conversation. I do have one more question. But before I get to that question, related to Dormify itself, is there a question that I didn't ask that you wish I had asked? Or is there a topic about Dormify that just didn't come up in the conversation that you wish to talk to us about now? Well, I can just talk about some of the real must-haves for your dorm room, starting with great storage. So you need to really maximize the space underneath your bed. And we always recommend lofting up your bed. And um, sometimes the furniture in your room will do that on its own. But if, if not, you'll need to buy bed risers. But really maximize every single inch of space underneath your bed and go vertical. I typically like to put plastic drawers underneath your bed, as well as some sort of multi-purpose furniture piece. We actually have a Ottoman bench on Dormify that I absolutely love. That is a triple threat. It has <laughs> storage inside. It can be an extra seat when you have friends over, and then you can also step on it to get onto your lofted bed. So 
That's one of my favorite products. I also love our three drawer cart, which is a great bedside table because it has a built-in charging capability with a power outlet, similar to our headboards and anything charging is a bestseller. So I recommend one of those and it's perfectly, um, it's the perfect height for a lofted bed. And then, um, next I would say focus on lighting. What we hear from our community all the time is that no one uses the overhead lights in their rooms because <laughs> and they call it the big light. Like they always keep the big light off and they just use their decorative lighting or their lamps because the fluorescent lighting that the room comes with is just horrible. So I really <laughs> recommend investing in lighting. And if you're shopping on a budget, that's not an area I would skimp on. And then lastly, I would make sure to bring something homey into your space. So whether that's a rug to make it feel warm or photos from home to really make it feel like you're at home or um, pillows with personality that just feel like you bring your own personal um, aesthetic into your space. And I think it'll, it'll serve you well. Your room is where you spend a majority of your time, believe it or not. So it's worth <laughs> investing in. Oh, and last thing on that point, a mattress topper is one of the most important things that you can buy as well, just for extra comfort on top of that provided dorm mattress. First cover it with a mattress protector and then put a mattress topper for upgraded comfort on top. Yes, a mattress topper is an absolute must, something that unfortunately decades ago when I was in college, frankly, did not exist. Mm -hmm. But both my daughters have it and it is absolutely more comfortable than my own bed, frankly. Mm -hmm. So thank you for those pieces of advice. This has been a tremendous conversation. And it leads me to my last question, which is, what advice would you give to students who are getting ready to start their freshman year of college? Big question. <laughs> so many things. I mean, looking back, there's so many things that I would have either done differently or approached differently, but um, there's a couple that really come to mind for me. So first is, it sounds cliche, but yes, these four years are the time where you can really have your last ounce of freedom before entering the real world. <laughs> and you have to take advantage of every single moment, whether that is um, stepping outside of your comfort zone and you know, meeting people that might feel and look different from you, building relationships with other students, professors that might just feel totally different than the types of people that were from your hometown, um, but really like immersing yourself in that diverse environment. It also might mean taking classes that are completely unrelated to what you think your major is going to be. Um, I was a double major and I only had a few elective slots in my schedule, but I took the most random classes and they're the ones that I end up talking about a lot. Um, I remember my husband took a, uh, history of the Beatles class and it literally <laughs> comes up at, like once a month. So I recommend just really stepping out of your comfort zone and, um, not being afraid to do so. And then second related is this, this concept of networking and, um, students ask me about networking advice all the time. And I think what's really important to share is not about like the quantity of people that you meet in your college experience, but just quantity. I always recommend saying yes to as many things as possible because you never know who is going to come into your life in a different way down the line. So say you're like me and you want to start a business and you're like, I'm not an engineer. I need someone who knows how to code. Well, maybe if you had experience meeting people from the engineering program or the engineering school and you, for a group project, decided, I'm not going to just work with my friends. I'm going to work with someone I don't know. You never know how those people could come back into your life. So again, spread your wings. And then when you're meeting either advisors or professors or people coming to give a lecture on campus, I always recommend if you're going to connect with someone that you think is an important person to keep in your life, um, don't just shake their hand and say, hi, so nice to meet you. I'm so-and-so. <laughs> Follow up with an email, explain something unique about yourself so that they remember you and check in with them. I don't know, maybe once a quarter. And even if you have nothing new to share, hey, John, 
I met you a few weeks ago on campus at WashU, and I'm the one who said this, this, and this, and just continue to reach out to them and say, hey, I just landed an internship. This is where I'm going to be this summer. Um, I always really, really appreciate students that do things like that to me. And there's been a couple instances where students that I met when they were 18 years old through something Dormify related, kept in touch, and then ended up becoming employees. So if you are passionate about something, just stay connected. It's really hard for people to remember you and anyone. People don't remember me. So (laughs) I would just recommend that you stay organized um, beyond LinkedIn and keep track of your key contacts and stay in touch. Well, those are tremendous pieces of advice, Amanda. I have to tell you, it's just such an honor and a pleasure to meet with you today and to talk to you about Dormify and your own experience throughout college. I can't thank you enough, and I'm so happy as I know that this is going to help so many students and their parents as they prepare for their college years. I hope to have you again, Amanda. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on this episode of The Cap, the College Admissions Process Podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, please don't forget to tell a friend and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and wherever you listen to your podcasts. I am your host, John Durante, and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of The Cap.